Well, Australian research is again at the forefront of coronavirus research with a new antibody injection in development that will look to keep people out of intensive care. Researchers at the Garvin Institute are analysing the genomes of COVID-19 infected people to discover why some people are completely asymptomatic, although they have the disease, while others are severely impaired. The director of the Garvin Institute of Medical Research, Professor Chris Goodnow, joins me now from Sydney. Professor Goodnow, thank you so much for your time. It's been a conundrum, I think we've all talked about. We've talked about it on air here, certainly, but I know amongst uh, families we've all had the conversation. How can some people get nothing more than a stiffle or, or no symptoms at all out of this virus and others it costs them their life? Well, Peter, thanks for having me on the show. And uh, that is the $64 question. Uh, it's been a question at the centre of... of uh, immunology ever since uh, the first vaccine and it's got to do with the way our immune system responds. Uh, some of us uh, respond in a way that uh, uh, causes perhaps more disease than the virus itself. Well give me a sense of what your scientists are, are working on with this antiviral uh, option. Yes, well, Peter, so one of the challenges is that variability in the immune response from one person to another. And so we can uh, bypass all of that, uh, that variability in how much antibody we make, uh, by going straight to producing what we think is the ideal antibody. Uh, so this is, we think, the most straightforward route to produce a drug, an antiviral drug, that stop infection, to stop people being in hospital and, and to stop the deaths. So let me be clear, this is not a vaccine that you take to prevent you getting coronavirus. This is something that can be used once you have a, an infection to mitigate the severity. Yeah, if the uh, antibody drugs work the way we hope they will, the, you could give them either to someone who's been infected uh, and they would mm -hmm. hone through the body and knock off the virus wherever it was, or you could give it to someone that's at risk of being affected. Uh, for example, our frontline health workers. Well, let's just say with the frontline health workers, I've looked at some of the statistics uh, out of the United Kingdom and out of the United States in particular, and there's been a, a huge number uh, disproportionately of health workers who have been killed by the virus, many of them young, uh, many of them without the comorbidities that have taken other lives that are younger. You know, most of the deaths have been older people. Now, that would seem to suggest that there's... Uh, a risk of overexposure or a viral load making you more susceptible, regardless of your age, to dying from this virus. But that's, that's my guesstimation. What's the scientific value there? Yeah, no, it is a really key question and it could be simply exposure, as you say, or it could be the stress. I mean, you think about uh, the immense stress that our health workers are under in, in places like Wuhan or New York. Uh, and, you know, stress is not good for your immune system either. Uh, regardless, if, if we can get this antibody drug to work as well as we think it has, and we hope to be in clinical trials by the end of this year, um, it, it would be the kind of thing you could inject once for a month uh, and buy a health worker immunity, even while we wait for a vaccine or even in the worst case scenario where we, we can't find an effective vaccine. And, of course, it's just two points there. Obviously, uh, people who work in nursing homes and other places where there are vulnerable people have seen yet another circumstance where uh, a worker has infected others not knowing themselves to, to have coronavirus. This is obviously very important. Um, but also, you know, we talk as if we think and know that a vaccine will materialise. This COVID-19 is quite close to SARS, we never had a vaccine for SARS. We still don't have a vaccine for, for something like AIDS. So, again, how likely is it, do you think, we will have a vaccine? And, you know, I know it's like a piece of string, but any sense of the time frame? Well, Peter, I'm an optimist. So I'm optimistic that we'll conquer this virus with a vaccine. But having said that, as a scientist, we've never come up with a vaccine for any of this class of viruses, the coronaviruses. They have the biggest genome of any of the RNA viruses, and that gives them a lot of tricks to play against the immune system. Uh, and that's what you see. So with SARS, for example, it was very clear that people do make antibodies while they're infected and when they get better, 
But within two years after recovering from their infection, those antibodies, uh, which is a measure of possible immunity, uh, those antibodies are gone. Uh, we see the same thing with the common cold, which is another coronavirus that has jumped into the human population some time ago. Uh, we do make antibodies. We have some immunity, but it uh, lasts uh, typically for less than a year. And look, just last question before uh, we, we go. I mean, public health is grappling on governments and grappling with this idea that we've got to get the economy moving, which is absolutely true, and so there will be an easing of restrictions. The Prime Minister signalled that today. Um, in the absence of your antiviral work being there for, for use in the absence of a vaccine, what does success look like for anyone over the age of, say, 65, 70? Does it mean until these things are conquered, they are really pretty much self-isolating at home? Well, that's why we've got to have so many efforts going, and there are so many efforts going. We, I think we all experience uh, that the economic and social impact of this social isolation, as miraculous as it's been, particularly here in Australia, and I think as a community and, and for our state and federal governments, we've got to be immensely proud of how we've flattened the curve. But, but what we're all very keenly aware of is that we can't keep this up uh, forever. Uh, and uh, so that's why we're working as hard as we are and why so many other medical researchers are working as hard as we are. The more shots on goal, the sooner we'll get some that work. Professor Goodenow, thank you very much for your time and uh, your very simple to understand explanations. It's been great to have you on the show. It's a pleasure to be with you, Peter. Thank you.